The U.S. and China are rivals, but the U.S. is selling natural gas to China and feeding its economy. Does this give the U.S. leverage over China, or is it a mistake? America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect yourself whenever you go online. I'll tell you more at the end. So for a while now, the U.S. has been a natural gas production powerhouse, and not just because it has a Taco Bell on every other street corner. No. Getting natural gas has never been so easy for the U.S., thanks to advances in horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing or fracking techniques. Which is why, over the past decade, the U.S. became the world's fastest-growing liquefied natural gas exporter, and is on pace to become the world's largest LNG exporter this year. Since 2017, the U.S. has been a net exporter of natural gas. The U.S. even beat its pre-pandemic 2019 export record with an all-time high in 2021. Now, this is great for the U.S. economy, and it puts America in a position to help allies in Europe who have been struggling with natural gas supply since the Ukraine war began. Although it's still not enough. There's just one problem. U.S. companies sell gas to the highest bidder, and the highest bidder is frequently China. Sometimes it feels like America's China policy is a dunk tank. America lets China pay as much as they want to continually try and sink us. Chinese energy companies are the fastest growing customers of American natural gas exports, purchasing nearly half the gas that U.S. companies agreed to ship in the last year. According to U.S. government data, China was the third export destination for U.S. liquefied natural gas in 2021. This has made the U.S. China's second largest liquefied natural gas supplier. Considering China is America's biggest rival, America sure does a lot of business with China. This is like a kid preemptively offering the school bully his lunch money. It's mutually beneficial for both of us. Which is exactly the argument some American organizations have made, as you'll see in a minute. Now, the U.S. hasn't been selling natural gas to China for all that long. In 2016, China bought about 9% of U.S. gas. Then, as part of the U.S.-China trade war, China put massive tariffs on U.S. natural gas, which meant Chinese companies stopped buying. Meanwhile, the U.S. government was trying to persuade China to buy more natural gas. The Trump administration frequently pushed natural gas exports in high-level talks with Beijing. Trump's goal was to rebalance the U.S. trade deficit by getting China to import more from the U.S. So essentially, the U.S. relationship with China is a double dunk tank, where both sides pay to keep trying to sink the other. After the U.S.-China trade deal was signed in early 2020, China waived their natural gas tariffs, and the natural gas business exploded. A total of 17 deals have been announced by U.S. suppliers and Chinese buyers since 2021. These deals cover 19 million metric tons of natural gas per year. Many of the fixed contracts that Chinese energy companies have signed with the U.S. over the last few years are just now starting to kick in just when many Americans have been suffering from high energy prices and short supplies. Of course, gas executives and organizations like the Atlantic Council say this is a good thing. They say that long-term U.S.-China liquefied natural gas trade brings strategic benefits to both countries. The argument goes that this provides well-paying jobs to Americans and that the U.S. helps China reduce global carbon emissions. But getting China to rely on less carbon-intensive natural gas, China wouldn't need to use coal as much, and that would help combat climate change. Well, I certainly hope those jobs pay well, considering they're going to need the extra money to pay for high energy prices caused by exporting so much natural gas to China. Although China has been binging on U.S. gas to manage their carbon footprint, China isn't going to be turning away from coal anytime soon, especially whenever the country faces an energy crisis. And the Chinese Communist Party will always consider its own interests before anyone else's. For example, during last year's energy crisis, China ordered top energy firms to secure supplies at all costs. 
given that the U.S. and China are at odds over a lot of things, you'd think the U.S. wouldn't be so eager to fill China's energy needs. The Biden administration's U.S. national security strategy recognizes that the People's Republic of China presents America's most consequential geopolitical challenge. And before Biden, Trump was known for countering China too, so what gives? Well, the simple answer is money. But China's new appetite for America's natural gas has some U.S. lawmakers worried. And I'm worried that it's only some. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. So despite growing tensions between the two, the U.S. has been exporting natural gas to China. In fact, Shenair Energy, the largest U.S. liquefied natural gas exporter, is betting on China to underpin growth. That doesn't sound risky. What's wrong with putting all your eggs in a basket? Specifically, a basket that's hurtling off the side of a mountain. Many people are concerned about the Chinese corporations that are buying up U.S. natural gas. Some of those firms are working against U.S. interests, dealing in oil from sanctioned countries, drilling in areas notorious for human rights abuses, or helping the Chinese military capture contested territory from its neighbors. For example, Chinese National Offshore Oil Corporation, known as Sinuk, was put on the entity list by the Trump administration. The entity list is a trade restriction list maintained by the U.S. Department of Commerce. If you're on the list, you need to get a special license to trade with the U.S. because of national security concerns. Basically, it's a we're not so sure about you list. The U.S. Commerce Department said Sinuk acts as a bully for the People's Liberation Army to intimidate China's neighbors and the Chinese military continues to benefit from government civil-military fusion policies for malign purposes. Which shouldn't be surprising, given that Sinuk is owned by the Chinese state. So it has to carry out the political aims of the Chinese Communist Party. More specifically, Sinuk has repeatedly harassed and threatened offshore oil and gas exploration and extraction in the South China Sea, with the goal of driving up the political risk for interested foreign partners. Which all sounds really bad, but no one's talking about the firm's positives. Namely, it's money and it's money. So Sinook has a bit of a checkered history, and less than a year after the Commerce Department called them out for some of the shady things they did, the company signed its first ever deal with an American gas exporter. Sinook plans to buy three and a half million tons of American natural gas annually for the next 20 years. This one deal alone is more than enough to heat every single home in Massachusetts each year. Which is way better than the usual way people in Massachusetts warn themselves. Burning rage at the fact Tom Brady ditched them after they had to pretend to like him for two decades. Deals like this are giving China muscle to become a major force in the global liquefied natural gas trade. But don't worry, China has been putting U.S. natural gas to good use. You see, they didn't use all of the gas they bought from the U.S. Instead, they sold it to Europe. Europe's energy security has been in jeopardy this year because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Thank goodness China was generous enough to sell U.S. gas to Europe. At a hefty profit, of course. So the U.S. sells natural gas to China, and China sells it to the EU for even more money. And the U.S. doesn't get the credit or the extra profit. That's not great. But now, the flow of natural gas from China to anywhere has stopped. China's trying to ramp up energy imports and halting liquefied natural gas sales in preparation for the winter season. So now, we've got natural gas going to China, and China is stockpiling it. That's outright concerning. It's also concerning that the U.S. is giving resources to the same corporations that advance China's South China Sea ambitions as well as improving its military capabilities and promoting authoritarianism elsewhere. It's like the guy in the dunk tank giving money to his kids who use it to try and sink him. Not the best business model. Some policymakers, like former Trump energy aide Mike Catanzaro, say China taking U.S. energy is actually a good thing from a national security standpoint. He argues that that way, the U.S. has leverage over China with respect to energy. Basically, he's saying America could pull a Russia on China. I'm sure that'll work, because it's not like China would just go right back to using coal. China wouldn't do that because they obviously care so much about what the rest of the world thinks of them. 
Both Republicans and Democrats are calling for the White House to consider new limits on natural gas sales to China. They want to close loopholes and add more Chinese energy companies to a trade blacklist. U.S. companies, meanwhile, are fighting tooth and nail to keep selling natural gas to China because Asia is where the future growth is. Glad to see that U.S. corporations care so much about U.S. national security. They're more like a kid in school helping the bully collect other kids' lunch money for a cut of the action. And this episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark was recently rated Editor's Choice for the best VPN for privacy and security by PC Mag, which is important because big corporations and governments are trying to track everything you do online. But Surfshark can help protect you. Surfshark even keeps a server in the British Virgin Islands. You can use that for maximum privacy because the laws there allow Surfshark to not keep any user data logs. Plus, when you get Surfshark, you can use one account across all your devices. Laptop, mobile phone, iPads, everything, for no extra charge. So if you haven't yet, check out Surfshark. And when you sign up now using the link below, you'll get 83% off a two-year plan, plus three extra months for free. So go to surfshark.com slash uncovered and use the code uncovered to secure this deal. The link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.